breaking insights there by Peter Pinches Maura, who, by the way, is currently uh, at the RFUA grounds on Gong Road. And he will be telling us what is happening in day one of the Safari E7s. And uh, after that, I'll be talking to Michael uh, Giduka, who is currently on set uh, here with us. We'll be discussing a raft of issues that are happening. But I hear it's uh, raining uh, cat and dogs where Peter Pinches Maura is at. But let's just uh, see it for ourselves. Good afternoon, Peter Pinches Maura. I hope you are doing very well and you are warm this afternoon. Uh, tell us, how is day one? of the Safari 7s uh, are going. Well, a very good afternoon, Florence, coming to you live from the RFUA grounds. We are currently the 23rd edition of the Safari 7 is ongoing. An exemption of competition, this particular one so different for the last two years. Uh, if you just look at, uh, not the, actually not the biggest turnout as expected, but if you look at the teams that are participating currently, uh, the world-class team, we have teams from the World Series side, the likes of Spain, the likes of South Africa, and even our neighbors, Uganda, as well as Russia, who has been able to fill uh, two teams. And I'm, I'm currently underway is KCB, the national seven circuit champion uh, taking on uh, Zimbabwe and it's an exemption of match. Uh, Zimbabwe are currently leading. Uh, we have had uh, currently uh, actually now these are round two matches. We have had round one matches. Uh, we have had uh, exemption of results especially with the national team uh, that is the Kenya Shuja. Uh, being able to record first wins in the first two games and of course the Morans were able to record in the first the kickoff match around 9.30. They were able to record a 24-10 win against Uganda. Uh, but later they lost against South Africa who are seeded first uh, in a, with a margin of just five points so uh, the, co the level of the competition is an exemption one maybe Florence just a quick um, uh, recap on some of the results that have happened or, or rather some of the matches that have uh, already happened in, in round one uh, Uganda uh, lost the first match against Kenya Moran uh, that is 24-10 and then South Africa who have been seeded first and they have not just a South African team they have the best squad coming uh, to Nairobi with the likes of Cecil Africa uh, gracing this particular competition they were able to record a 60 one nil win against Burundi uh, before the third match uh, that ended uh, 1919 uh, that is Western Province against Zastava uh, from Russia. Uh, Samurai who are the defending champions they lost their first match against Red Whalers uh, an invitation side from the UK and later Blue Bulls were able to record a draw a 24-24 draw against another Russian side that is the Russian uh, Sevens Academy uh, that is uh, under the tutelage of a legendary coach from Fiji. Uh, Shujas uh, the Kenya main team or rather you can call it the Kenya A team were able to record a 31 nil win against Zambia. That is a pool C encounter before Zimbabwe uh, were, handled, uh, were humbled to a 24 nil by 70s. Another invitation side from uh, France uh, and uh, later we saw uh, the, the National Sevens uh, Circuit Champion KCB they were able to record a 24-7 win against a uh, HSBC series side that is Spain. Uh, just go a long way to tell you that the competition has changed. Uh, people expected that maybe Samurai could be able to record wins, consecutive win. Uh, lucky for them in the second pool game, they were able to record a win. But it's, it's going uh, to, to be a tough competition with the, uh, the teams having to fill the best score that they have. If you look at the Kenyan team, we saw the return of uh, uh, most of the experienced players that are making up the Shujas. And of course, the youngsters who were able to impress uh, during uh, the last year, while the last season, Wild 7 Series, they're not making up the Moran. So it's going to be impressive to see, uh, to be interesting actually, to see how the two days will be faring. And maybe, maybe who knows, we might be uh, surprised seeing maybe the likes of Morans because with how they played against South Africa, I think they, they, they are in to win this particular competition. But again, competition is wide. Uh, we are going to see different teams uh, providing different uh, dynamics or rather approaching different match uh, differently. And uh, that is the exciting part about it. The fans are coming in uh, in large numbers. Uh, of course, the way uh, providing or rather making some of them to uh, decide to maybe hold back uh, at home. But I'm advising anyone who is probably at home and wants to uh, make his way to the RFU, make sure that you have uh, a raincoat and a gumboot because the weather here is a bit rainy. And uh, even the clouds are hanging and you can see that maybe by the time we have the last match around 5 p.m., uh, the weather will be different, uh, Florence. Uh, but for now, uh, this is what we have from the RFU grounds. Once we have anything, any update, uh, we'll make sure that we, get, we give you the best uh, from the RFUA ground. Back to Florence in studio. Uh, Peter Pinjas Mora, before I let you go, uh, I would like to ask you about the organization. How would you rate uh, the 2019 Safari 7s? And also, I've seen on social media a lot of guys, I don't know if us media guys are being petty, uh, but I want to believe it's not pettiness, uh, that we do not have a right place for uh, the media uh, to do uh, their work. We do not have a specific 
uh, place set aside for the media. Peter Pinjas Maura, are you suffering where you are? Uh, have they <laughs> done justice to you as a journalist? <laughs> Well, I, I think by their organization and the weather, how it has behaved, let me say that maybe this is beyond them. Uh, probably they organized. Uh, of course, we have a media center, uh, but you know, some, some, it's not a place that we can't be able to do what we are doing now, or uh, providing you with live feeds. It's uh, just a place that you can't be able to sit down and maybe uh, prepare your story uh, for a bulletin, or, or rather it even favors uh, some of the photojournalists and even newspaper journalists. But for us, for broadcast, uh, you have to come out here and uh, get rained on a bit and make sure that you provide the best angles. But in terms of any other aspect of organization, I think this one is a, an, an exemption of competition. And it's good, Florence. Uh, you talked about uh, how the Safari 7 for years have been one of the well-organized team uh, sports in the country. But it, and now it's good to see uh, rugby coming back to its glory days in terms of the organization. If the fans are coming back to the stadium, I'm just hoping that even for tomorrow, we can be able to see a larger number of fans coming to this particular stadium. Uh, remember again, uh, rugby is also attracting uh, different sponsors now. Remember for a very long time we have been suffering with some of them uh, shying away uh, because of different rangos in the union as well as the mismanagement of funds from uh, different quarters. And for very long, uh, for, for, for several years, we are, rugby has been suffering. As well, you remember uh, they were able to secure a very uh, a large sponsorship deal or rather a big sponsorship deal uh, uh, from one of the leading battery farm that has since existed the market and once they existed or rather they uh, they terminated their contract with rugby then we saw uh, rugby going back to uh, a st standard that are not, we, we are not used to and it's good to see companies coming back and investing um, you could see the stadium is branded that, that just tells you that we have a lot of uh, money coming, chan being channeled into this particular tournament. And remember again, uh, Florence, it's good uh, for this particular competition to have the level of competition with the likes of Cecil Africa uh, having to grace this competition and playing against our Kenyan side. It's good to get, it will help us to gauge ourselves uh, because in November we are supposed to head to South Africa for the Olympic qualifier. And with the ladies having secured that ticket to the Olympics uh, in Tokyo, it would also be nice to see the men's team also secure uh, a ticket to the Olympics for the second consecutive time and I mean that will go a long way in, in, in growing rugby in the country because again just participating to the Olympics there is a certain amount of money that the union has to gain and again we remember the world uh, series is supposed to kick off in December with the first leg where we'll be facing actually Spain and South Africa who are uh, currently playing this particular tournament so it's just a, a competition that will also help us gauge our players uh, the likes of Injera making a comeback the likes of Wimbaka but again just making a comeback is not enough we also need to test and see whether uh, when they were away, whether they have been able to maintain uh, the, the standard that we used to know them uh, in. So it's good to see how they're going to perform, but so far so good. I think the Kenyan teams have performed well, and I'm hoping to see even a final that we can be able to see the Kenya Shuja taking on their junior, or rather the, 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 the B team, that is Kenya Morans. Back to you, Florence.